And welcome back to The Cellar. I'm your host, Richard Glover, and you're tuning into another amazing night in The Cellar where we talk about wine, fashion, and lifestyle. And just let me remind you that this month is National Ice Cream Month, and I believe this Sunday is National Ice Cream Day, so go out to DQ and to Cold Stone and all those different ice cream uh, areas that you can get ice cream in and, and, uh, and get your ice cream. I'm going to the store and get me some Klondike bars. So next Thursday, I'm going to have a few Klondike bars with me on the show, and we're going to taste them and see if they taste good with wine. I, I think that's going to be a great idea, wine and Klondike bars. Got to be a sweet wine, though, a real sweet wine. Like maybe wine that has some chocolate in it, and that's going to be about 18% alcohol, so I thought I'd let you know that. Or Klondike bar with a sherry. I mean, hey, it all works, you know. But anyway, first of all, I want to, I want to share this with you, and, and it's been on my mind. People, please be careful out there. The Delta variant is here, and the pandemic is not over. And I know a couple of states uh, is piking up again with the, the, the virus, and a lot of people are getting sick and passing away. I, I, carry, I carry my mask with me everywhere I go, so I'm just saying to you, you know, this is real. If you're not vaccinated, if you're not wearing a mask, please go to your nearest uh, medical center or call your, your nearest government location and find out where can you get your either Moderna or Pfizer uh, 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 vaccination. D do it for yourself. Do it for your families. Do it for us as a people in the United States of America so that we can be safe and we can move through this, this pandemic and, and be able to get out there and see our friends even more and spend more time, okay? I just wanted to get that public service announcement. Uh, I have a lot of friends that, have, that don't do it and I tell them every day, you know, take that, get that, vaccination, get that vaccination. I was one of those folks that didn't want to do it. And then finally I decided to get it done and I'm happy I have I did it. I made the move. So I'm telling you, please, in the community, go out there, get your vaccination, reach out to your local governments and find out where can you get a free vaccination because it may not last long. <laughs> anyway, also some other quick things. Look, every Thursday and Saturday night, you can see your boy at social at Focus Social Lounge. That's right. Open at 1348 A Street, Northeast Washington, D.C. It is the hottest place to be where you want to network and meet your friends. And we have some upcoming events coming up. We're doing a wine tasting on a Sunday. We're doing an all-white wine tasting where we're tasting white wine, and we're going to dress in all our white coming up next month. We're going to be hosting the Miss, Miss uh, Bikini pageant for the, region, the Mid-Atlantic region. So, I mean, amazing things. And we're just going to have a lot of events. I am your event specialist at Focus Social. So if you want to put an event together, reach out to me. My number is 202 760 8813, or you can reach out to me by email, richard at the And let's put together a nice event and invite your friends out. And there's a lot of networking events that are going to be going on. So it's open. And tomorrow is, we actually had a soft opening on last Friday and Saturday. Tomorrow is the grand opening for social, Focus Social Lounge. So meet me there on 8th Street, Northwest, Washington, Northeast Washington, D.C. Anyway, Look, uh, let's bring my girl in. Before we bring her in, she has an announcement that she wants to make to you. So let's go to the videotape. Hi, everybody. My name is Malia Lopez, and I am in Miss Waterford, USA. So in about 15 minutes, I will be taking over the Miss Michigan USA page. So you guys have any questions to ask me at all, feel free to ask me. I can't wait to see you guys there. Hi, everybody. everybody. My name is hey, Malia, how are you? I am good. How are you? <laughs> great, great. So the journey starts. The journey begins. Yes, it does in about a week. The journey week to the crown. Half, so August Miss, 6th and 7th. Miss USA. Yes. Okay, yeah, I think we, are we having, some, I, are we having yeah. audio issues or is it just that we both talking at the same time? Yeah. So anyway, introduce yourself to the people and let them know what you are embarking on. You are running for the what? Okay, we have a network issues. We'll have to come back to that. Let's go to a quick break, and then we'll come back, and we'll introduce our first guest tonight, the one and only professional makeup oh, artist. I'm so glad to be here on your show. I, it's, I see you're doing very well. I'm very proud of you. Yeah, thank you so much. First, at the beginning, first, the first time I remember I met you before the pageant of Miss yeah. AU, wow, the the fashion and the modeling industry, you told me you have a feature for commercial modeling. 
can you just explain to please explain to us what about uh, what is the commercial modeling and is it need uh, the person who is seeking an opportunity of modeling commercial modeling does the person have to have uh, specific features well you know when you talk about commercial modeling uh, it, it, it's a whole different uh, area in the modeling industry when it comes to runway or if it's coming to modeling where it's it um, it's anything that's not print so most of your commercial modeling are print and you know they don't look for height pretty much they look for that look that that gives that wow effect because what you're doing is you're promoting a product or a particular event so it's sort of kind of different it's different than the runway you don't have to worry about being a certain height and you don't have to really know how to do a runway but you have to have those features that uh people will be able to see you in a magazine or on a billboard or on a commercial uh whether it's an advertisement for tv or if it's a regular type of advertisement you have to have that wild effect you know that's going to get on their people to say okay whatever they're selling i want to buy what is this kind of what is the feature that you are talking about is it only on the face or the height or? well it's more of the you know face you're the face of a product it's, it's definitely the face you know you, you you have to be able to you know by your face be able to and by your poses you'll be able to sell whatever product that they're promoting you for or you're being promoted for so it's, it's pretty much the the face, not so much the height, because most of the times you're sitting down or you're standing, and even in film uh, or even magazines, it can, they can make you look tall you know, based on the angle of the photographer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that also takes me to an important uh, topic to talk about. You started a career in modeling and fashion. Just early to your childhood, where is that passion come to you from? Well, um, it's interesting because coming up as a kid, I never liked clothes, never wanted to wear a suit, never wanted to wear, you know, nice looking casual clothes. I always was happy and comfortable with a pair of jeans and a t-shirt on all through my school year until I got into my uh, 11th, half of my 11th grade year, going into my senior year. Um, I was driving, I was able to, you know, get my license at an early age. I got a license at 15 and a half and I started driving my mom's car and, and so what happened is, you know, once I got to my 12th grade year, my mother bought me my own car. And so I used to take one of my cousins shopping. Now, she was a shopper alcoholic and she also was a fashionista. And I would take her to the mall. And at the time we on, we would get to the mall and I would just walk around, do my thing, go to the, the uh, uh, vending machines, either go to the game room. And she said to me, you know, hey, since, you know, I, I'm, I'm bringing you out here. Is there anything that you like? Um, and I was like, well, you know, I mean, you know, just get some pizza or something. But she ended up buying me a pair of, of slacks and a nice shirt. You know, I took it, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't immediately put it on. I put it in the closet, looked at it, and then one day decided I, when I couldn't find any jeans that were clean enough to wear to school, um, I put it on and um, I kind of felt good in it. And uh, everybody gave me compliments in high school about how well I looked. Uh, it could have moved the geek guy out of being a geek into sort of somebody that was, you know, good looking and presented himself well. And from that point on, I just started liking clothes. And um, of course, I had my good Sunday go meeting clothes, you know, my mom bought, you know, for Easter and for Sundays. Um, but uh, as far as owning my own clothes, and of course, then I got a little job on the side while I was in high school. And I started buying my own clothes. And the more I started. Welcome back to the Sully. Yeah, I had an interview earlier today. At one o'clock, a young lady who was actually one of my pageant girls when I was executive director for the Miss African Union pageant. And I think I reached out to you about that once before, early back in 2018. And I was looking for makeup artists and stuff. You probably did. I probably, I, mean, I thought we were talking briefly, but uh, she was asking me about my, how did I get into fashion? How did I get into all the things I'm into? And uh, the, the story, the true story is that I just hated clothes. Really? I didn't like wearing nothing dressed up. I wanted to be in jeans and sneakers and a T-shirt. And it was my cousin who I, who was a, a, a shopaholic and she loved clothes and stuff. And she had a real good job, too. So, 
And I would take her to the mall and I would spend time in the mall while she's shopping, you know, and I right. think if I ever got married, I would be the guy that didn't mind sitting in the mall while his wife is shopping. <laughs> so, uh, That's always fun. Yeah, you know, and uh, <laughs> so uh, she got me into dressing. Okay. And the outfit that she bought me, I, I put it in the closet and finally I decided to wear it one day to school and everybody complimented it so much that I thought, you know, and then I had a little part-time job then, right. so I just started buying clothes. And here I am today, you know. <laughs> you know what I always call you, one of the sharpest right. guys in D.C.? Right. So, you know. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only professional makeup artist out of the Washington, D.C. area, the DMV, my friend, <laughs> Flammy. Hello, Richard. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are As you? As always, you look amazing Thank and you. gorgeous and, you know, and, and you smell like... <laughs> Sweet roses. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As always. Well, welcome to the cellar. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you here. You know, I know it's been a while. It was talked about it this. It has been a while. When it was a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, but you're here while we had the actual studio. So, you know, welcome. This is so cool. Congratulations. This Thank is you. really beautiful. Thank you. This is my 12th year. That's amazing. Doing this thing. That know? is amazing. I love and it. And now we're doing it where we can sit down in, in, the, in the purple chair. Exactly. And relax, you know. Absolutely. And we're really going to taste some wine later on the day. We're going to taste some wine I look on forward the show. to that. Awesome. <laughs> so, Rami, let, let's give my... Oh, listeners, your full name. Flaminia Garioni. I own a company called Fuby Makeup and Brow Studio. So I do uh, makeup in the area. I travel sometimes. And then I specialize in eyebrow shaping. Wow. Yes. So do you think I need anything done with my eyebrows? Your eyebrows are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get that. I get Men that. get grooming. It's, it's, it's great. Is I love right? it. Yes. You know, I've, it's a place um, in, the, um, in, my, in the mall mm -hmm. that I walk past sometimes. And they have, I see ladies, you know, uh, look like a string. They do the threading. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. called, it's called threading? It's called threading. Okay, yeah. so is, is, is there a difference between threading and <clears throat> tattoo? Oh, well, threading, waxing, all of that is a removal. Tattooing is a form of adding color and okay. kind of making the brows look fuller. Um, oh, okay. I don't do any of those. I specialize in tweezing only, so I kind of work with people that have been right. in hair removal for a long time, and we just kind of work on getting natural full eyebrows. Wow. So it's a little different. But. So, so you mentioned earlier that men you know, get into this a lot. Absolutely. Too, you know, a, a, I have a growing number of male clients that get into grooming just to look nice and neat. They don't want to look done like the ladies, but, right. you know, they want to look clean and, and groomed. Awesome. So it's, it's a good thing. Well, we don't, we're going to be right back. We're going to take a real quick break. Don't go nowhere because I have some more questions. Okay. And we're going to tie how makeup, <laughs> professional makeup and and professional wine and all yes. that because I know sometimes makeup and you, wine I love it absolutely because you go <laughs> I go to salons you know that you know because I get a facial here and there yeah, yeah. and um, they have, they offer you wine or champagne you know and it's interesting how all of that works in that industry together like that so. absolutely it's just a part of luxury treatment I used to do it in my salon it's you know it's awesome. just a nice service to add great so yeah well, don't go nowhere don't, all right don't go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> I got her captive here. And don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and I've got my guest, Flammy, professional makeup artist, with me. Welcome back to the cell. I have my special guest tonight, Flammy, and uh, she's a professional makeup artist. So we left off that you were talking about your business. So, yes. Uh, you did have a business at one time, um, and you, you know, you, you, are you getting to recreate it now, or is it? Um... Well, I've, I've been in the area for 20 years plus. I've mm -hmm. done a little bit of everything, freelance work, in-salon work, then I opened a salon. 
<clears throat> had that for a few years on U Street, five years. Mm -hmm. um, and then just a year before the shutdown, I had kind of gone back to um, just adding to what I do, and I decided to take some time to invest in myself instead. So, awesome. and then fast forward, you know, I'm sort of partnering with salons now to, you know, kind of get things rolling again. Wow. So, yeah. And, and you know, I, I call you a celebrity because every time I turn around, you're doing <laughs> something big <laughs> with somebody big, you know, yeah. not just here in DC, you know, other places. And uh, so, uh, where are some of the places that you've done? You know, you've been, you've, I know you like New York Fashion Week, maybe like DC Fashion Week. Or I some did of a lot of, um, a lot of artistic work like that, creative mm -hmm. work when I used to freelance. So if I was working with NARS or MAC or Laura Mercier, mm -hmm. we got some great opportunities to do some, some great freelance work, which can include fashion shows, photo shoots, you name it. Um, you know, I've done work with Washington Life, Washingtonian, and you know, all the local, okay. like amazing, um, magazines and things like that that we have awesome. um, and then I you know I do get called on by um, concierge um, okay. PR companies for high, high profile clients that come to the city sometimes wow that's yeah, interesting if there's so, any kind of filming or production I've, I've done that work okay. as well so you, you'll be in your studio or working on somebody and a concierge will call you from the risk call to say, hey, we have such a, and they requested you, or, or are you on a list? Did they say, you know, the, the CD, DC's yeah, the best? Yeah, concierge, you know, okay. you work with them over time, and they call you, you know, the more wow. you get to know them, the more they trust you, and they call you on for high-profile clients, so wow. you've been doing that for a long time. Wow, so, that's yeah. amazing. I didn't know that at a, a that's a five-star hotel that does that stuff, right? Quite a few of them, yeah. Wow, Absolutely. I, I got to make sure the next time I get to a, a rich content <laughs> out of town, I, I need to see the best, please. I need to get my face done. That's what that's what guests do. They call on concierge really? to get hair and makeup, nails, whatever they need. So, you know, we, we kind of get those calls. And you go right to them at the... At the <clears throat> go right to the room. Absolutely. Right to the room. Because they want it in their privacy on the okay. room. So, yeah. Wow. Interesting. Usually. I, I didn't know that. That's, oh, that's yeah. It's, it's a big thing. Industry. Yeah. So, tell me, tell us a little bit about the... The makeup industry because this is pretty huge and it's it's a it's a segment or it's a part of the fashion uh, industry itself because right. you can't really do <clears throat> a photo shoot without a makeup artist. That's true. It's very true. You know, I don't care how good a photographer say they are. <laughs> you know, you can and I and I'm a photographer as well. I know sometimes if I have a model that doesn't have makeup on, right. it makes my job even more. You know, to have to make it, that photo shoot come out with the pictures. Uh, beyond acceptable and, and, and at excellence. So uh, that is just a quick industry industry that they go hand in hand. Right. Yeah. Makeup is important, of course. There's different kinds of makeup for different kinds of occasions. But um, when you're talking about pictures, cameras, mm -hmm. um, the face is very important. It's all about expression, looking, you know, bright and even and things like that. So... And, you know, that's interesting because in the interview I had today uh, on a Four Direction uh, podcast, the question to me was, well, Richard, um, what makes a girl a model, you know, in either print or on runway? And I said, well, there's, there's really two difference. I said, because this net is a big requirement of your height in uh, right. commercial or print. I said, but you have to have that wow look. Right, you know? absolutely. Because if a yeah. person, is, if, you, if, if you're doing a commercial or you're doing a, a print advertisement, and a person's trying to sell that advertisement, it's the look that they look that you have to have for them to it's gonna bring people or attract people to that advertisement and to that print. And it's gonna be sometimes and nowadays it's more that look that everybody right. can identify with. Absolutely. You know? I'll even give you an example coming back from the pandemic, the shutdown. Um, I'm a little busier than I thought I would be because as people like are working from Zoom and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they get away with putting their hair back and things like that, but their face is right there. So, you know, surprisingly, I actually have quite a few clients that have been coming in wow. fairly quickly after we came back to work. So wow. the face is very important. Very important. Yes. You know, uh, got to hide some of those blemishes and Exactly. Stuff. Exactly. Now, we what, all have imperfections, you know. Absolutely. Exactly. So what what is over makeup? Is it is, is, is such a over makeup? Is there such a, a word or a term? I, I've seen women that I think, over made up. Overly made up. Overly made up. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, such a thing as too much makeup or um, not blended, things like that, whether it's done too quickly or people following trendy IG makeup, things mm -hmm. like that, and don't take the time to really, really 
learn it and make it part of the skin. So there, there's a difference there. It, it can come across a little overly done if it's not done right. Right. There's, and there's, and a, there's a trick to it. Is, is that a uh, detriment to a person's skin? That there's too much makeup? or I mean, I've seen it look like, like cakes of, I don't know if it's called foundation or what. Right, foundation. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's a detriment because hopefully, you know, they're washing their face really well at night. Okay. But, um, but it, can, it can clog pores and over time cause a little damage. Now I'm gonna ask you don't you want to do too much every day. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you brought up a good point, washing your face. Every, and I know we're talking about makeup, but sure. all of that, it goes, part, with, it. It goes yeah. with it. You mm -hmm. know, it, Absolutely. If some person comes to you and say, okay, I want you to do my makeup. I got a photo shoot, but they haven't washed their face in three days. You know, can I'm you probably going to freshen up her skin, okay. make sure that it's, you know, like hydrated and right. uh, absolutely makeup looks better wow. when you do that. So. And, and, you know, there's, like you said earlier, there's so many different, uh, uh, I guess, avenues or parts of makeup, you know, like you said, Many. commercial, yes. uh, videos, Correct. movies, stage plays. It could be a corporate thing. This is DC. We do a lot of corporate um, mm -hmm. things, whether it's, you know, a meeting, um, commentators on the news, yes. all kinds of stuff like yes. that. So and it even, could be a little bit more. And even funerals. Not, oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I haven't done that yet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> but, you know, I just, I just always wondered, you know, is that an art itself? You know, I mean, you have to really know how to. Funerals? Make a dead person look. I don't know yes. what to make them look like. I actually I? was asked years ago to, to do something like that, <laughs> okay. but, um, I did not do it, um, <laughs> <That's okay. You laughs> but there are people that do that for a living. They, they, they just do that. They work yeah. in funeral homes and they prepare for the burials. Face. Absolutely. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yes. Wow. And I guess that's because of the, uh, uh what is it called? Um, the, 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 the solution they use, the embalming solution. Correct. You know, Correct. And you embalm a person, then the, the face loses some kind of. Exactly. But it. it's also just, you know, for, for viewings, things exactly. like that. They, they want to make the person look a little bit more, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So this. I respect it, but I, I don't, I haven't done it yet. You right. never say never, but I haven't done that yet. You never, you never <laughs> know when that phone, the phone rings and say, hey, <laughs> this is Johnson's or this is Bob, mm. Bob, whoever, you know. <laughs> You know, uh, the corner store, funeral home, <laughs> right. a makeup artist. Hey, hey. like I said, never say never, but I, I haven't done it yet. Great. So yeah. let's, let's talk about how you got into the industry yourself. You know? Wow. I mean, um, were, you, were you the little girl that you know, was in mom's makeup, you were looking, trying, you know, in the mirror with the, you know, mom's dress on, mom's shoes? and you were I certainly up? was, 100%. <laughs> wow. um, we were in Italy growing up. I was a kid. My mother did hair for many years. I had aunts in New York that were makeup artists for Chanel, for um, Christian Dior. And mm -hmm. I looked up to all of them. Um, wow. Oddly enough, I wasn't allowed to wear makeup till well into high school. Oh. So um, I snuck it one day and my mom <laughs> caught me and she was like, damn, that lipstick looks good. <laughs> I knew that it was meant, you know, that's, I knew that that's what I was going to do. Right. Did yeah, you from ever, a young did age. Did you ever, um, you know, get your, your little kid, play, your playmates, you know, and say, hey, let me do your face. So, you know, I, I see a lot of little girls doing other girls' faces and stuff. Right. Know. Actually, no. I no. kind of threw myself into the industry. Okay. I started freelancing for a small little lip palette okay. line at Nordstrom um, at a, at a one-day thing. And one of the ladies in the uh, store who still works there to this day um, asked me to come and do some freelance work for Bobby Brown at the time. It was wow, a okay. brand new line. And from there, it was, you know, 12 years of freelance work. And it was the great time to do that. I had some good opportunities. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So, so I mean, a guy. Let's 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 move to the men because I I, okay. I like to look fresh. Yeah, at all you sure time, do, you and know. you 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 look good. Uh, and I, <laughs> I, you know, I, it's very rarely I go to a makeup artist. I mean, sometimes if, if I'm making a special appearance on somebody's show and they have a makeup artist. Yeah. Or when I'm doing a pageant, or if I'm doing a fashion show. Absolutely. Uh, and I know they have makeup artists there. I always tell them, you know, can you just lighten my face a little bit. I'm going to be on stage. I know it's going to be hot and I don't want to be sweating. Yeah. And they kind of, you know, do a little bit of stuff. They throw some mist on my face and all that stuff. You have great skin, but yeah, just, you know, sometimes for guys, for men, it's just more so making the skin look even, mm -hmm. powdering up so you don't look oily. Very easy, but it's... So should a man a good take thing. time? Should a man take time to do this? Like maybe do a makeup or do a, uh, do a mask or something at night or 
Uh, Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Good, you know, good hydrated skin is good for preserving right. youthful skin. All of that is good for all of us. It's not just for the ladies. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like in Europe, uh, men do get into knowing how to even out their skin tone. They'll carry mm -hmm. a concealer stick or a powder if they're very oily. It's very normal. Okay. Um, and, and it's slowly coming, you know, to the U.S. Like, <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, you know, I'll get a question about what to okay. what to have in their bag for a little grooming. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. A brow gel, just a little something to look put okay. together. So, mm -hmm. so it's okay if I have a little makeup kit in my Absolutely, it's okay. Yes. Me, I got to run to the bathroom to feel like my... My, my eyeline is dripping. One hundred percent. If you find yourself, wow. you have to film something at the drop of the dime. Exactly. It's nothing wrong with having exactly. it on you, just in case you don't have an artist to yeah. put you together. And you know, I I try to before I come to the show. Yeah. I try to I spend some time at home uh, doing a mask, or you know, um, I'll, I'll rewash my face. I I'll do stuff to try to make sure that you know I'm don't look you know, bad when I'm, I don't look like I just got out of the bed and stuff like that. And it you shows. You, you look great. You look good thank skin, you. good eyebrows. Oh, thank you. Look <laughs> very groomed. <laughs> and it's interesting because my interview today, we talked about men and men grooming. You know, and I, I think it's very important that a man, you know, even though it doesn't seem like it's a macho thing, but professional men, and, and, and not just professional men, but men, period, should take some time so I'll put that little effort I in. agree I agree it doesn't make you not macho it's right. it's just uh, it's just all about presentation and looking proper and put together um, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that you look like you're wearing it it could just be for the right occasion that you need a little something wow yeah. well, I mean, nothing so, wrong with that so great to have you thank here. you we're it's gonna have to do a so show. much fun yeah we're gonna have to do a show where we have an actual male model and a female model that would be so cool do a demonstration absolutely you know, we can do it over there back there we have some a demonstration yeah and stuff. Well, that would be so awesome don't I'll go do anywhere. That. We'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. I have my special guest, Flammy, here, and we're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to come back, and we have an amazing gentleman in the studio, ladies and gentlemen, by the name of Tony Woods, and I'm sure you know who he is. So <laughs> don't, go no, don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. We're going to go to a couple of commercial breaks. Remember, this is ice, National Ice Cream Month. So, you know, be careful. Um, before we even leave, we're going to ask you about some poor stuff. About okay. The poor stuff. All right. We'll be, we'll be right back. Hey there, my name is Steve Christensen. I'm the executive director of the National Ice Cream Retailers Association, and I hold in my hand an extremely important document. It is a proclamation signed by President Ronald Reagan and passed by Senate Joint Resolution 298 that designates the month of July as National Ice Cream Month and further goes on to say that the third Sunday in July is National Ice Cream Day, this year being July the 19th. Now, the president goes on to say and call upon people of the United States to observe these events with appropriate ceremonies and activities. Now, as you know, there have been devastating consequences as a result of the worldwide pandemic, particularly on small business. Now, the food service business has been particularly affected negatively in that many restaurants and food service establishments have either closed or cannot open. Now, your local ice cream shop finds themselves within that segment of the food service community. And so I encourage you this July, uh, being National Ice Cream Month, to get out there and support your local ice cream shop. Our ice cream shops and ice cream have been with you in the good times and they've been with you in the sad times. And for no other reason, let's get out there and support your local ice cream shop owner and all of their employees to help make this July, this National Ice Cream Month, the best it can be for ice cream retailers around the country. So on behalf of the National Ice Cream Retailers Association, please stay safe, enjoy National Ice Cream Month, and support your local ice cream shop. Hey there, my name is Steve Christensen. I'm the executive director of the National Ice Cream Retailers Association, and I hold in my hand an extremely important document. It is a proclamation signed by President Ronald Reagan and passed by Senate Joint Resolution.
in right now. Okay. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the South. Of course, Tony came and took him on the show. He said, hey, welcome back. My bad. <laughs> Welcome to the cellar, sir. Hey, it's good to be here, man. <laughs> Glad to have you, man. All right. You know, right. ladies and gentlemen, one of the most prolific comedians of today's time, the one and only Tony Woods. All right. I thought you were going to introduce somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I had to get that in because you came back and brought the show right in. You know? yeah, well, I like to take charge first. You know? I, I like well, I mean, you know, I know that when, when the camera come on, action. That's right. Like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Tony, tell us. I mean, we, we know you're a comedian, but you've been all over the place, all over the world. You, yeah. uh, you've helped create comedians. My sons ain't comedians. <laughs> 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 they funny, but they ain't comedians. Well, you know, um, I, I always believe that uh, every industry, you know, has a tie into wine because yeah. now you're on stage. Dude, I've I've been to vineyards. Yeah, so you know, yeah. the wine is flowing. You know, yeah. and the jokes are coming and. I've been like uh, all, all, when uh, when I tour Australia. One of the things because they they have activities for you to do, like you do this, you do that. But one of the things we would do is like different places. We would go to want to vineyards. Right. I love it because they it's like you come in first, you get a little thing, and then boom, you're like, all right, this is cool. Then they take about their family, they take about this, they take about the wood, they take about the grapes, they take about this. So by the end of the joint. You uh, you sign you. It's like buying a car. That's You're like, right. Okay, that's yeah. right. I want to get this many to come and send them. You can send them to friends. And I had buddies right. who was getting uh, wine and stuff. Like not once a month, but I would send it here and there. Okay. So those were yeah, I love those vineyards. Man. Oh man. And it's man. a lot of science behind y'all's wine. It's a lot of science, man. I, I um I've I've only dipped in the science piece a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. um I am going to be starting a vineyard in uh, right. South Southern Maryland eventually, you know, the, That's what's to up. include to the 198 uh, wineries in the state of Maryland. I saw something on some one of those news programs, you know, like Sunday morning thing. Right. And it's a dude in the desert in the Middle East somewhere. So he was, he was, uh, he's figured out a way to grow grapes That's in right. the desert. You saw and, that? I, yeah. I, I heard about that documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, he's, they, uh, they he's figured out some kind of way. Yeah, in the, you, in the middle you, of the desert. Well, he's, well, well, when you think about South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, and South Africa was not a original wine region, only since the early 80s, mm -hmm. they had a way of figuring out how to raise and harvest grapes on sandstone. Yeah. Because that's what they have in South Africa, a lot of sandstones, and those sandstone rocks, they're not real rocks. So, And that's where they came out with the uh, Sauvignon Blanc. In South Africa, wow! Uh, even though the original Sauvignon Blanc comes from uh, uh, New Zealand, wow! Because of the the, the terrain there and the, the the island being by the water and the cool the evening the day is hot but the evenings are cool and so warm. So who, who grows the best grapes, man? Oh, you, you is interviewing it, me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it France? Is it Italy? Is it Northern California? Hey. Is it? Well, uh, let's put it like this: yeah. your French wine, your French wines are definitely in the top growth. So, the, in 1895, 1855, the Medoc Grave did a classification of your top growth growth of mm -hmm. wines and grapes. And you know, and, and you go, you start going down. You know, you hit the top five, and you got the next five, top ten, and top fifteen, twenty. And France always, France always, you know, on the top. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, and when you think of champagne, when you think of champagne, the best champagne in the world is from France. It's from champagne. It's from France. cognac. <laughs> <laughs> so are you telling me you're a cognac guy? I'm a cognac because that's cognac is just is is wide to the ten power. That's right. right yeah. That's right. So that's right. I'm going to the top. <laughs> you go to the top. Yeah, Great. So, time so to Tony, go. tell my yeah. listeners about you, man. Let's talk about about what you're doing, man. I mean, you're I an amazing know. comedian. You know, you're all over the place. You know, and I'm glad that you brought the the comic here, the comedian, yeah. the comedy here to the show. Well, they called me and said, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you, yeah. Um, what what was the question? Because you, you threw me off when you started talking about cognac. I'm like, hold up, man. Okay, sorry we don't have the cognac tonight. It's just wine. So just wine. Just that looks wine. very cool, lady. But I like it. Yeah. But I'm. But you you people make wine. Um, when I when I was little, we used, in North Carolina they used to have something. Muscadimes, you know. Yes, that? yes. Those are the yes. grapes, and old people make it, but they made it in, in like mason jars. Mason jars, and yeah. then you got muscadine in Alabama and yeah. North Carolina and stuff. And but I don't, I don't think you should 
this this wine. I remember everybody, the grown ups is drinking. I'm like, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think you can put this in a champagne glass. This, well, this no, you can't. You can put it in a, a wine glass in still a because mason it's jar. <laughs> mason jar. In a mason jar. <laughs> well, that's all they had back yeah. then. So you know, and when you think about um, those states right there that do make mes muscadine wine, mm -hmm. you know, um, they're most of the time for ta they're like tabletop wines yeah. or table wines and stuff like that. So, um, but this it's a big, uh, it's a big. It's very big in the south, yeah. south state, southern states, you know. Yeah. But let, let's, I want to know how you we got keep, started. We keep in the venue instead. That's cool. <laughs> I know, mate. Yeah. You're shifting the table on me. My here. bad. <laughs> how do, so how did you get into, how did you get into, how, I, well, I, always, I always thought I was a comedian. But, you know, I would make, I would make jokes around my friends, but then when I, was put on the stage one day, I would bomb yeah. badly. <laughs> it's something, it's like you can, you can do your kids hair. But you can't stand up in a beauty shop and do it for eight hours. Yeah, that's true. You can that's play true. basketball on the playground, but can you play on ESPN? Exactly. Yeah. So, so how did Tony Woods get started? Did you did you did you joke your friends? You know, no, them? I was uh, I I was never a guy who like dun 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 dun. dun. I was never. I just said stuff and people like looked at me like, really, <laughs> you good <laughs> like that? You know? And it just and I've always been above happy like not bouncing off the walls but not a sad person right. even okay. though a lot of sad stuff happened that's how you make comedy okay. from sad stuff and just always been able to see like a brighter side when I was in the military a buddy of mine he said you should do comedy like, you know <laughs> comedy crazy right. but he signed me up to come down to uh, the comedy cafe in DC and I went down this first comedy show I ever seen live. Right. Oh my God, that was the funniest show I'd ever seen in my really? life, man. And I know some of them guys. Some of them guys still do the same jokes. <laughs> but <laughs> but that time, that was the first time, and it was the best. It was the best ever. Okay. And I remember they called my name. Like I said, uh, uh, next guy coming to the stage, Tony Woods. And everybody started clapping. Mm -hmm. And I looked around. Look, I ain't moved, dog. I, I just because <laughs> <like, laughs> I was like, I was like, like you said, I didn't, I didn't made my friends laugh. Right. I, this is a whole room full of strangers. That's right. I, I don't know what to say to these people, and I didn't say nothing. <laughs> Maybe that was funny. Yeah, I'm <laughs> oh, sure it had to be funny. The next day at work, everybody's like, "How'd it go?" I'm like, "Yeah, I killed it." <laughs> but the dude who sent me, he said, "Why didn't you go, man?" I'm like. Was you following me? Like, I, I'm like, yeah, he said, I know you didn't go because that would have been the first thing you talked about when you came in. That's right, that's right. Yeah, but I, I, I took three more years before I finally worked up the nerve wow. to do it. And it was a lie that got me up because I was going to the, to the comedy club on open mic night, me and a buddy of mine. And we would stay, we started eight, we, started, we stayed until like 10, 10 30, mm -hmm. and then go to the Ibex. Because <laughs> it was ladies' night to wow. Ibex. We go to the Ibex, and then the days. next morning, my my uh, my wife, my ex wife, would say, uh, What'd you talk about last night? And whatever I heard, what was funny, I was like, I talked about blah, blah, blah. And I remember one morning she said, She was brushing teeth, she said, That was funny. I'm like, <laughs> Okay. Then she started telling her family that I was a comedian, I was doing comedy. And everybody's like, Where can we come see you? Man, no, yeah, no, you don't want to come. So, Maybe this went on for like a month, and then one morning she says, all the execs on my job are going out of town mm -hmm. Friday, so boom, I'm going with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, we should just rent some videos and chill, because I'd be going, no, yeah. So boom, I went up that night and just winged it, killed. Really? Did what, you know when she found out that that wasn't my first time? About a year or two ago on an interview really? like this. Wow. Yeah. She's like, don't you come she said, see that's that's why we're not together. You'd be lying. <laughs> 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 wow. wow. And then from there it's just been yeah. magic. Uh, yeah. So it's it's a passion of yours, right? It's a passion, yeah. And it's 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 a it's a journey, man. It's just like that that song by Hotel what what by the Eagles, Hotel California. Hotel California, yeah. Yeah, you know, he said on a dark desert highway, that's you on your everyday job. Exactly. But you look at it and you're like, Oh, look, you see it in the light, it's shimmering, mm -hmm. like, Whoa, I can't wait to get there. And you get there like ah, ah. <laughs> and everybody like, Whoa, we ain't hurt we haven't had that feeling since nineteen sixty nine. Cause you all ah, ah Exactly. And then you get a taste of Hollywood, you're like <laughs> <laughs> I want to go, man. Oh, you can check out anytime you want. Wow! But yeah, you can so never leave because, because like what we do is it's a drug. Yeah, you know yeah. you need it. You can't, yeah. 
you can't do this. And like during the pandemic, I was working for Grubhub. It was like, mm, nobody has to take a picture with me. <laughs> nobody was passing me on phone numbers or nothing like that. It's nothing. Like, no, nobody was saying, man, I think you're the best girl pub driver ever. <laughs> None of that. They were giving, they were getting their food and moving on. Yeah. And no, yeah, because remember, it was the. The, yeah, that's when everybody, yeah, everybody was, was all, all messed up and stuff. Yeah. I think that the the wildest thing that happened to me, right off of Connecticut Avenue, in Chevy Chase. You mm -hmm. know where the Country Club is on Connecticut yeah, Avenue. So, and right so say you 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 headed towards D.C. and then you make a left down one of them little streets, that just winds, 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 goes all the way down to Rock Creek Park. Yes, right. Okay. It's uh, yeah, there, at the end of the street. I go up. That's at the beginning. I got everything, gloves, everything. I go, I, and the little girl goes, Daddy. The food is the guys here with the food because there's no contact, but you take it out of your mm -hmm. bag, you put it, and it's a dog, like it's a fence, it's a dog, and the dog kind of look at me like, <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, do you see this, man? Like, he, he just looked at me, and then he backed up. Then the other dog came that I saw on my peripheral, and I looked, and his, his, his body was like this high, mm -hmm. his neck was at that long, and I, said, <laughs> and I said, no. I just said, no. And I said to the little girl, I said, <clears throat> Is that your pony? <laughs> and she said, that's not a pony. That's a miniature llama. He comes from Central America. Oh <laughs> I'm like, I knew it was a llama, but I wow. know this is Chevy Chase, too. That's, yeah, what, yeah. I, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Exactly. I was thinking, what kind of dog is that? Yeah, but the wow. dog was funny because the dog kind of looked at me like, where do you <laughs> see this? You. And he backed up. <laughs> and, he said, and then he was kind of standing behind him like, told you. <laughs> that's what the dog was like. Oh said, you, know, you, you got yeah. a surprise here. Yeah. Wow, you know, um, interesting. You know, uh, I again, you know, it's got to be an art to it too. I mean, and and you spoke about the pandemic, so yeah. um, now that things are opening up. Uh, well, I've been hitting the road again, but I, I know a lot of people was complaining. Like everybody, I was probably the only one who wasn't complaining. That was the first time mm -hmm. in over thirty years that I slept in the same bed for over for thirty days consecutively wow. over 30 days consecutively i was like i was good i was like i'm good everybody like i know you can't wait i'm, I'm good <laughs> i have this one question um and i've been meaning to ask other comedians that i know do you write your do you are i mean when you, when well, you do you write stuff down or is it just I, I i don't but really? but the other ones do you know the successful ones they do they do and they also <laughs> have <this one. laughs> them ones with writing jobs and you know they want them ones they write stuff down <laughs> I don't. I don't. I just kind of remember it. Stuff just brings it to mind. That's great. Like that's the, good art. I may go. I'm gonna do this. Do this. Do this. Do and I and I'll start with this, and mm -hmm. then I'll see somebody, and oh, I see something, and it brings me to something else. Bang. Wow. That now that's an art. Yeah. That's an art. You know. Now or or. <laughs> or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't go no. Don't go anywhere. I have the amazing Tony Woods here in the studio with me. And we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're gonna taste some wine. Okay, Are I thought we was gonna that? start with I that, but look. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back.
and welcome back to the cellars i'm your host richard glover and you're tuning to another amazing night in the cellar i have my two special guests in with me i have flammy professional makeup artist and i have comedian extraordinaire tony woods and we're going to do a real quick uh wine tasting because tonight we're tasting a wine called intrinsic and it's a uh, it's a it's a blend it's a red blend and Tony is already moving on the <laughs> committee. <laughs> He's already upsetting the you know he knows if you, what oh, to you're do. not supposed to do that. No, you're not supposed to do that. If you do that, it's like it's like upsetting a woman. Okay. Oh. So hold tight for a second. No <laughs> so we're gonna uh we're gonna get right into it. <laughs> so we're gonna look in the glass. You're gonna see it's a this is a blend, it's a it's a mix of Merlot and uh Savia, uh Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. And um it's at fourteen percent. We're gonna put our nose up to it and smell it. Now you're gonna swirl it. Now this is when you swirl. I know, already swirl. I know, but I'm gonna go ahead swirl, and swirl it again, again and see yeah. if there's a different smell to it. Now it's actually opened up more. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And see, and yeah. wine opens up it's over a hundred times. Yes. And from the time it moves from the wine mm -hmm. bottle, and I I used to bring the bottles in, but now I'm doing the uh, uh, decanter because I want the wine to open up even more because of the, the time I'm gonna show. Right. But we're going to taste it. The first taste is when you touch the tip of your tongue. The second taste is when it lays on your palate. And then the third is the finish, what it's like in the finish. Are you ready? So we're just going to... Take it, bottoms okay. up. Mm -hmm. ah. So did you get a bite in the beginning? <laughs> yeah. A little bit, yeah. Just yeah. a little bite, uh-huh. Yeah. What about when you laid it on your palate? I felt a little bit more. Yes, a little bit more, yeah. and you begin to taste the alcohol in it. Yeah, and you begin to taste the other ingredients. Like this has peppers in it, and um, yeah, I taste spiciness. It's a spi it is yes, a little spicy. It's a little yeah, spicy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's good. It's it's got a wooden taste. It's it's because it's, it's a that's it's a Sauvignon, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and a Merlot mix. Mm. So with Merlot is more of a lighter wine. The Cabernet Sauvignon is more of a heavier wine. It's so yes, yeah. Mm. And the finish, of course, was short. A little dry, but it was short, and it wasn't wet. That makes a big difference. That's yeah. good. It's like, it's like grape Kool-Aid makes the other Kool-Aids all taste better. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Like, yeah, like awesome. it, it put the grape with any of the other ones, it, it hooks it up. You know? Well, while, we, while we're still tasting, let's bring in Malia. I believe that we have the audio and video fixed. Let's bring Malia so she can do her segment. We got a few minutes to get her segment in. So, okay. So, Malia? Hi, Malia. So Hi, this how is are you? Hi, Malia. So can you tell us uh, about your segment, uh, what you're going to talk about? Because we're running short on time. We want to get it in. Yeah. Yes, I can. Yes, for sure. So actually, when you guys were talking about face masks earlier, that is actually one of my segments, what's going to be. So it's going to be facial masks and then nose pores and how to use them and which ones makes your skin look really good and really flawless, especially for this end of the summer, early into fall. So let's get started. So I've tried a few of them and these actually, Richard, I'm going to do a little bit men's and women's. So these nose pores for men are perfect and amazing. They will not only like clean your nose, but they will get any of like those blackheads or dead skin. It'll go right down deep into the pores and make your nose shiny and just feel good. And it kind of feels like you get like a little facial too while you're at it. Makes it glam, makes it feel good. Now these are also for women as well. So it'd be about the same thing. Goes in a little deeper for women than men because you know sometimes we sweat with our, especially with our mask on, but you know, some places, but yeah. These are really good. You can get them at Target for around, I think it's 7 or $8, which is well worth it. You get 18 of them. I do mine at least once or twice a week to make sure my nose looks good, especially for Miss Michigan coming up in just a few weeks. So, yes, I am preparing with this product as well. And then there is some also other facials. So this is one of my favorite detox facial masks. It's by Kylie Skin. I think it's on the website for maybe $25 or $30, which is perfect. It goes into your pores. It feels like you do have you got a facial done. I'm obsessed with it. I use it about once or twice a week. So it's a really, really good product. The money is worth it. You'll love the results. There's a lot of great reviews on there. I love her skin line. 
Now, this one I bought the other day at TJ Maxx. It's the I Do Care Sugar Kitten. So not only does it hydrate, but it also smoothens your skin as well. You put it on your face. It's really shiny, too. You put it on your face. It glams up. I think you leave it on there for 15, 20 minutes. Makes your skin still feel so good and flawless. Um, I got that at TJ, I think, for $8. But you can also get it at Ulta, I believe, at $25. I got the little mini size. So, yes, this little mini Meow Trio is perfect. I believe Alta, I'm sorry, Target has it for about $13. It gives you three little samples of different other face masks. The little black one and the little cabinet on right there, it's for the T-zone. And then the other marshmallow one is also give you that little glam and, um, glam and shine on your face, which is perfect. So yes, that is my segment for this week. Also, I think that there is one more that I sent as well. It is called, I think it's um, one of the companies that I work with. Yes, Teamy Blends Detox Mask. It has like matcha and like avocados and I know avocados is really well on your skin um this is good for women and men which is perfect you know especially with all the like the sweat and you know all your glands and everything but yeah Richard that is my segment for this week I am using almost all these products from Miss Michigan starting in about a week and a half and which I am super excited to compete in <laughs> congratulations and it's a journey so I'm glad that I am your director and I'm looking forward to this journey to the crown from Miss yeah. Michigan, USA, and then from there to Miss USA itself. You know, we got to get on that stage and win That's that crown. Awesome. Thank you so oh, much, Malia. Really appreciate that. You. We will see you next week. All righty. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, my time is actually drawing nigh. You know, Tony, I, I had so many more questions I wanted to ask. I wanted to. Well, I was in Detroit this past weekend. Everybody goes, what up, though? <laughs> <laughs> Man, so glad to have you here. Um, so, real quick, uh, and Flammy, so glad to have you. Can you so give uh, Can you give our, our listeners and viewers your uh, uh, social media handles and how they can reach out to you or follow Absolutely. you? Absolutely, it is um, IG is Fuby Studio. That's F as in Frank Y U B as in Boy I Studio. Um, same thing on Facebook and Fuby dot com is my website. Awesome, and Tony, how can our followers? Follow you. You don't want nobody follow. It's just uh, uh, Instagram is Tony Woods with a Z. It's okay. Tony Woods with a Z. Yeah. Great. People always fussing about. Hey man, you got announced. I'm like, ah. <laughs> you stay telling jokes. Don't you? <laughs> Real quick, I know. So, so, um, so you help create a lot of um, comedians from this area. I didn't create them. They, they didn't create them, but you... you I am, you, influenced them. Like, okay, like, say, Dr. Go. J. So, Dr. J was a good basketball player, and a lot of uh, up-and-coming basketball players watched him. So, just like that. Yeah, just like that. Sugar Ray Robinson was a heck of a boxer. Muhammad Ali. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Patted himself out. So bad. Tony Woods is an amazing comedian, and... Bicycle riding. <laughs> you won't answer that question. That I have. I, I'm gonna get you next time. I'm gonna get you next. I know the history, so I, I'm gonna get you next time. Appreciate having you. I really I mean, appreciate having I, I both really of you guys. It. You know, thank you so yeah. much. It was know, so fun. I got to bring you back again. You know, we'll have uh, to do it again. Absolutely, got to do it absolutely. again. We're gonna bring more wine. More wine, and, and and I may have something else for you <laughs> after the show. After the show, <laughs> and thank you so much for allowing me to come into your your uh, living rooms on your laptop on your smartphones uh, wherever you're watching. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, it's the Seller Wine Show with Richard Glover. Go to that little red button, say subscribe, subscribe, and follow me. Follow me. Some great content is coming up to you. Also, if you're on our Facebook page, the Seller Wine Show with Richard Glover, like that Facebook page and share it and share it. I'm your boy, Boom. DC's Wine Guy. And uh, like I always tell my, my, my friends and all my guests and everybody that's in the world of wine, take time. Enjoy fine wine. Indeed. And we'll see you next time in the cellar. Big shout out to my executive producer, Harry Hall, and hey. my engineer, Afiba. Yes. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Don't we do like